Hey guys, Nerion here. The stories I wanted to cover today are truly a mixed bag that go from the Tomb Raider remaster succeeding and becoming a beacon of hope in the wasteland that the western gaming industry has become. Then we'll go over how a lot of Japan is abandoning ESG and the woke agendas that the west is trying to force upon them. And then how on the other hand some Japanese companies like Square Enix and Bandai Namco are bending the knee and double down on ESG and censorship of their games for western sensibility which just really describes the roller coaster ride that is Japan's fight against wokeness, ESG, and censorship, which is currently reaching a crucial point where the future of Japan and their entire entertainment sector is at stake. But first we start off at the positive side, which is the Tomb Raider trilogy remaster and the success that it turned out to be to give players faithful remasters featuring the sexy Lara Croft design without censorship. As this tweet by Smash Lara announces, the Tomb Raider trilogy remastered has already made 1.9 million dollars on Steam alone, and that the unexpected success of the game makes further Tomb Raider remasters very possible. As the tweet is already a couple of days old, I looked up if the numbers have increased at all since then, and they actually have. They now report over 90,000 copies sold on Steam, which equals a gross revenue of 2.2 million dollars. Considering this is only a remaster of old games, so their expenses should have been quite low and considering those sales numbers are only the ones from Steam which doesn't count other stores and the console sales, Aspire, the company responsible for the remaster should be quite happy to have sold probably a couple hundred thousand in total already. The Tomb Raider News Twitter account alongside many journalists considered its revenue numbers unexpected, which just showcases the disconnect between western studios and western audiences. Western studios think that they know exactly what audiences want, which is, according to them, more inclusion of LGBTQ themes, more censorship and less feminine and less attractive looking female characters. To push all of that into games nowadays under the pretense of quote unquote making games for modern audiences. Meanwhile this modern audience that they're speaking of doesn't exist and the things they're forcing into gaming are not what audiences want at all. Most people don't care about what gender a character is or whether a character in a game is gay or not, cause those things don't affect whether the character is likable or not. Of course there are those people out there that will dislike a character based on their gender or sexuality, but the vast majority doesn't care what the character has between his legs or whether they're attracted to man or woman, as that shouldn't change anything about their personality and who that character is on the inside. So people don't care whether there's a few LGBT characters in a game as long as it's not pushed into their face constantly and aggressively, which is obviously exactly where many studios screw up and turn someone's sexuality or gender into their whole persona. At this point it becomes forced inclusion, which isn't well liked by anyone, including many LGBTQ people, as they also just want to be treated as a regular person with an individual character and not someone whose whole persona is completely defined by their sexuality. Same with the other aspects, meaning studios thinking the audience wants more censorship because they're so sensitive and that they want more androgynous looking and less attractive female characters because they think women will feel offended by sexy female characters and that trans women will feel offended from female characters looking too feminine. In reality this obviously isn't true. As always there will be those sensitive people that will get offended, but those people represent an incredibly small fraction of the gaming community. As most people People, including most women and trans people won't be offended by that. And yet those studios cater to that small minority and embrace the ESG model even if it's against the wants and wishes of the vast majority of their player base. When Square Enix released their ESG-influenced Lara Croft design, there was huge backlash from people, especially from original Tomb Raider fans, being upset because her face looked way too masculine and she didn't have the curvy body Lara is supposed to have. They got so much backlash that they eventually had to change their plans and officially announced that this wouldn't be the official design. Yet they most likely would have gone for this design if it wasn't for the backlash. Especially since Square Enix is highly opposed to the original sexy Lara Croft design and they they opposed ever bringing her back in a remake or a remaster of the old games, even though there was huge demand from the fans. Yet the OG Lara went against all ESG guidelines with her attractive face, sex appeal, curvy body and huge mummy milkers, so they never even considered bringing her back. It wasn't until Aspire stepped up and made the remasters happen with a team full of hardcore Tomb Raider fans working their asses off to create a faithful remaster for fans starring the classic sexy Lara Croft without toning her down 
down or censoring her. And guess what, the game is selling better than many expected. All thanks to the fans that created a faithful remaster without ESG influence and censorship, things that do nothing but harm video games. And that's most likely the main factor behind Japan already pushing back against ESG scores, as it started harming their industry just as it's harming the western one. As Bloomberg reports in an article from February of this year, investors in Japan drain 4.5 billion dollars as they exit ESG funds. They write that investors pulled a total of 660 billion yen from funds last year, which translates to 4.5 billion dollars. That's more than four times the outflows of 150 billion yen in 2022. In 2021, ESG funds boomed in Japan with total inflows of 1.8 trillion yen, which translates to around 12 billion dollars. Daisuke Motori, director of manager research at Morningstar Japan said, and I quote, rather than being a response to investor demands for sustainable investments, ESG was seen as a theme, end quote. So to sum it all up, Japan invested 12 billion dollars into ESG funds in 2021, yet since then have started increasingly to pull their money out of there again. My guess is that when the West started the trend of wokeness, DEI and ESG a couple of years ago, that Japan noticed that and began to dip their nose into those things as well. Something that was clearly a mistake, as they have probably noticed how much those things have harmed and destroyed Western companies, and probably noticed the harm it also began causing to Japanese companies and thus started abandoning those things again. Yet another area where Japan showcased to be smarter than western companies, cause they have quickly recognized the harmful effects of those woke programs and began to abandon them again. Which makes me really happy as I love Japanese media and I don't want to see woke lunatics take it over and destroy it like they've been increasingly doing in the west, which has become a sinking ship where trying to push back against it has gotten increasingly harder. Yet even though Japan never embraced it on the level as the west has, even partially embracing it has clearly been a huge mistake, cause wokeness tries to spread like a virus and some once great companies have already fallen victim to it, like in the case of Square Enix. Square Enix embraced western game industry practices when they started censoring their old games and creating new games like Forspoken, which resembled a western ESG influenced game all the way to its core. A garbage game with an ugly female main character. A game that was a huge departure from Square Enix usual games and one that failed hard, critically and commercially. As a result, a lot of fans turned against them and were extra cautious about their new game Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yet when Square released that one beach clip featuring an attractive Tifa in a sexy looking outfit, it took over the internet by storm. I couldn't scroll much without seeing someone posting Tifa scenes or pics from that clip. Absolutely crazy. Brilliant of them to release that clip, cause that's how you sell a game. I would even go as far as saying that Sexy Tifa created more hype than all of their trailers for the game combined. People love attractive female characters and fan service. They always have and they will continue to do so, even if many woke softies cry about how problematic that is and refuse to deliver. So when Square Enix posted that clip, people got their hopes up. Could it actually be that Square Enix learned from their mistakes and found their common sense again? Maybe not, cause they've now made an absolutely idiotic and unnecessary move that will only harm them, cause people are already calling them out for it in big numbers. Right before the release of the new game, they've released an 8GB update for the previous game that did nothing other than censoring the game by covering up Tifa with more clothes. Here's an example of it, with the new update version on the left, where they for some reason added a black shirt to cover up more of Tifa's bust in certain scenes. And that's apparently because the ethics department of Square Enix told the developers of the game to restrict Tifa's chest, cause according to them it was necessary. Seems like Square Enix may not have found their way back into the light again. Such an unnecessary change. Who on earth was offended by that? Cause there must have been someone out there triggered by it. It seems like Square Enix is divided and has an inner battle going on, cause first they release a clip of Tifa in a sexy beach outfit, yet then they censor her in the previous game? There must be some people at Square Enix that want to go back to their former strategy of creating good games with attractive characters and fan service that sold insanely well and got them their fan base. And then there must be the other group of people at Square that wants to embrace the woke mentality and programs that are plaguing the West. 
Such an unnecessary act of censorship that partially killed the hype again for their upcoming Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Them going back years after the game released only to add censorship to it. Censoring a product after people bought it is an incredibly disingenuous business practice that Square Enix pulled here, which harmed people's trust to them even further. Cause what if you buy FF7 Rebirth in its current version, you spend a lot of money on it, only for it to get censored after you bought it. Just like this popular meme by Manga Lawyer points out, about a conversation at Square discussing censoring Rebirth next. Did we hit 25 million views on Twitter with the Japanese trailer? Yes sir, but we lost a crazy amount of ESG points. Got it, release the patch. And then Tifa could go from looking like on the left side to looking like on the right side. It makes fun of it, but that's basically how those companies think and function. They care more about virtue signaling and appealing to woke investors than to appeal to their fans. And if they continue like this, many of their fans will refuse to buy their products. Making things even worse is Nexus Mods, which is a huge site where you can download mods for games, including the Final Fantasy games. Yet Nexus Mods is garbage when it comes to their censorship as well. Web Delta points out that somebody uploaded a mod to remove Tifa's censorship to Nexus mods and they already banned it. So even just restoring the game to the state that it used to be in is apparently already unacceptable to the guys running the site. And there's also already memes being created about that, like this one writing Final Fantasy VII Remake patch number 48 in 2030, giving us Final Fantasy VII Remake the remake, with Tifa censored even further. Or Yellow Flash responding, the new Final Fantasy 7 patch just dropped, to a pic of the Final Fantasy 7 cast where the guys look as usual but the girls were covered up more and more until the point where you can't see the slightest bit of skin. Of course those are still an exaggeration at this point, but that's the direction those woke corporations are taking female characters in, just to avoid appealing to the male gaze. It's sad to see that Square Enix seems to increasingly move into that direction, cause they're responsible for some great games and beautiful character designs. And nowadays they're even triggered about sexy female characters for some stupid reason. They made a mistake and partnered up with the wrong people. One of those companies they partnered up with is the infamous Sweet Baby Inc, which is a western company focused entirely on making sure that companies meet as many ESG requirements as possible. The same company that ruined many western games already as well. Everything they've been involved in only made the games worse. Like in Spider-Man 2, where they added missions like those where you are playing as a black deaf girl and need to spray paint walls. Instead of playing as Spider-Man, they added plenty of those kinds of missions. And even though fans complained about the Mary Jane missions in Spider-Man 1, they added more of those in Spider-Man 2 and made her the most overpowered character on top of that, taking down enemies with ease that even had Spider-Man struggle against. And when fans complained about those missions and how overpowered she is, they made clear that they didn't care about the fans' opinions and just did whatever they themselves wanted. Just like them changing Mary Jane's face because one of the writers wanted to self-insert herself into the character, making MJ not just look different but also uglier as a result. And that's the company that Square Enix decided to team up with. A company that will only encourage them to make negative changes that no one wants, yet they don't care about what the fans want. This anti-fan and anti-consumer mentality is spreading quickly in the West and is now trying to crawl its way into Japan as well. Westerners telling Japan what to do will lead to catastrophic results. And Square Enix isn't even the only company affected by this, as similar things are unfolding with Bandai Namco, the creators of games like Elden Ring and the Dark Souls franchise. Recently the Bandai Namco localization team admitted that they have ordered Japanese developers to censor their female character designs, like telling them that a cleavage is a bit too exposed or a skirt is a bit too short. Western companies are increasingly trying to influence Japanese companies. As the Western industry is going downhill and an increasing number of people are jumping ship to the Japanese industry, those woke lunatics are now trying to destroy that one as well. While Square Enix and Bandai Namco seem to increasingly cater to western sensibilities, I wouldn't call them lost yet. Next to increasing pushback from fans in Japan and worldwide, there's also clearly a pushback within the companies themselves. And as an increasing number of Japanese investors is losing interest in ESG and pulling their money out of those funds, I'm hopeful that Japan has a better shot at rejecting this woke nonsense than the West. And even in the West, where the situation is much worse, people are pushing back. 
Games like the Tomb Raider remasters are a glimmer of hope. It's great to see games like this succeeding, while wokeness and censorship keep proving to be a recipe for failure. I believe that things will get better again if people continue to push back against companies that try to ruin entertainment with their political agenda and delusional way of thinking. I will keep exposing them, especially since much of the media refuses to call those companies out for their business practices as many of them are sitting in the same boat. But I'm not, as I'm only loyal to you guys. And I simply love video games too much to watch them be destroyed. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you would leave a like on it, share it with others to spread the message and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again in the next one. Until then, take care.